uh, sir mentioned in, in the morning. And uh, if we look at financial analysis, this is a combination of any projects, thought process, technical and commercial sense of whether this project is doable in a PPP mode or not and then culminating various assumptions into a Excel spreadsheet and then see whether this is making sense or not. If I look at the private side, private side works at three levels. One is the detailed financial analysis, which is done by uh, the detailed uh, in, in a detailed Excel spreadsheet by their consultants or their in-house team of experts. Uh, but if we look at the overall decision process, decision process is on thumb rule basis at uh, uh, many places, these thumb rules work much better than the detailed analysis. So while we will discuss these jargons, we will look at all these assumptions and how do we uh, come back to a number wherein uh, somebody is comfortable in a particular project in highway. Uh, but I personally understand or th think that uh, on an overall basis, as uh, chief engineers or engineers in uh, in respective organization, we know whether this project is sellable or not, is viable or not. Now that works uh, on a gut feel or understanding of the field uh, to us. But at the same time, there are specific methods wherein we need to calculate in 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 an Excel spreadsheet whether this these numbers are actually adding up to the returns or expectations at various levels or not. So we will be discussing all those. We will be looking at where we find assumptions, what all aspects we look at in a particular uh, financial analysis. I'll be taking you through the detailed uh, case study. Uh, uh, pardon me if I go in, in basics also in some sense to uh, be on the same page. I am not aware of the uh, levels uh, at, at at various organizations, but I'll I'll keep it at balance level, and uh, I'll keep it at basic level in some cases also, wherein um, uh, the common platform can be used for understanding uh, at large. So I'll uh, quickly present my uh, slides. Um, I hope this is visible now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay. Thank you. And particip uh, participants, please keep discussing the issues whenever, whatever you feel to be discussed uh, or have more details, please unmute and keep discussing it. Keep it lively. Okay. Right. And uh, I may not have all the answers uh, which are asked. I am perceiving many questions. Uh, it may be monotonous also in the next one year, and that will decide how uh, uh, useful it is in, in the next one or two year, uh, hours. So to begin with, if we look at the financial assessment, uh, overall framework in a particular PPP project, we would have looked at or understood uh, various jargons, uh, including returns on investments, public-private partnerships, project revenues, costs, potential capital or funding structure, debt, equity, uh, net present value, NPVs, financial analysis, fiscal incentives, etc. Now, why do we do this and what do we derive out of it? When we look at a project in a PPP mode, we are looking for a private partner. And private partner is looking for a project with the public entity. And he looks at it from the profitability perspective. The financial feasibility is more or less uh, the assessment of a project on commercial basis. And this is required for not only the equity investment decision for the private player, but also the lenders, because the debt, uh, if, if, if you look at any PPV project or private investment, there are broadly two components in it. One is the equity or his own money, which is 
uh, invested by the uh, private partner, uh, which is generally in the range of 20 to 30, 20 to 40 percent, depending upon uh, the location, uh, the type of project, and so on. And uh, typically, it's 30 percent. And the next part is debt, which he generally take from the bankers. And banker look at various numbers from their perspective, from their securities. As public authority, when we do the financial feasibility or financial analysis, the perspective which we take is of private sector. Now, why I say this many times while doing all these computations, we take certain aspects which are not the responsibility of a private player and there the numbers may go wrong. For example, land acquisition. Now, in this whole financial feasibility, while for government approval purposes, if, because um, I think most of the officials are from the government entity side, I'll, I'll take that perspective. And uh, while uh, uh, doing a PPP financial feasibility assessment, uh, we are sitting or you would be sitting at from the government side. But when you prepare a financial model or do the financial assessment in a PPP, you will be thinking from private sector perspective, whether this is a cost to private or not, whether this is a revenue to private sector or not, or whether the private sector is responsible for this cost revenue or risk. So for example, land acquisition. Now private sector is generally kept away from the land acquisition and its associated costs. So while doing any financial feasibility assessment or for a PPP project, we keep that land acquisition cost and its associated cost away from the overall financial analysis. But when we do take approval from government, there is there are two aspects. One is financial feasibility assessment from the private side. The second is uh, government approval in terms of overall cost and value for money. Now, when we look at it from government side, then we might add the total in, in the total cost or total uh, outgo from government side, we may add land acquisition and other costs which are to be borne by the private, uh, by the public side, sorry. But in financial assessment from PPP financial modeling perspective, we do not add these types of costs. So I believe that we would have uh, discussed in the previous sessions about uh, certain costs which are shared by public and private, both in 50-50. For example, independent engineers cost. So in this particular model, what we do is we consider 50% of that independent engineers fees in, in uh, which is likely to be incurred by the private side. So when, when we prepare this model, we prepare it from the private side. I'm actually again and again insisting this if uh, many of us or you may be aware, uh, but these are the common mistakes. Uh, while we uh, undertake the financial assess uh, assessments in many sectors, highways is the most matured sector. So I would not say I would not say that this will this happens in uh, highway sector, but in emerging sectors like uh, urban municipal uh, uh, PPPs and so on, uh, the tendency is to actually include some of the costs which are not likely to be incurred or borne by the private side. And then the financial assessment go for a toss. So when we do the financial assessment to uh, sum up, we look at various aspects from the private investor perspective and look at that project from the return on investment, whether this project is giving, giving me adequate return or not. And while doing so, we look at five, six aspects, including project revenues. Revenues may be uh, accruing from toll or user charges or non-toll revenues. Non-toll revenues include various options like wayside amenities, sale of land parcels, and other, other potential revenue options which are assigned or given to the private player as per the concession agreement. Now, all these revenues are required to be defined in a particular concession agreement. So uh, when we, as public authority, uh, prepare a financial model, we also keep in mind what will be the risk sharing framework in, in, in that particular project. So for example, if we say that there is a highway project of say 100 kilometer and we will give 
say 10 acres of land parcel at every 20 kilometer to the private side for either commercial development or for various wayside amenities. In that case, what they will do is they will include potential revenue of that particular land parcels in their non toll revenues. So I hope I am clear on that part. Okay, silence is not good. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, in terms of, so uh, this is one side wherein we look at the revenue part. And the total of revenue actually is the deciding factor whether this project is going to make sense or not. So this uh, will be based on tolling revenue and non toll uh, revenues. The second part is to potential project cost. Now, when private sector look at this from uh, the costing perspective, many a times they include their project preparation costs also, which sometimes are overlooked or underestimated by public sector. But because the costs are not that high or in terms of percentage of those numbers, those are not that significant. For example, uh, the private side uh, while preparing a particular bid, uh, put in money in terms of preparing earnest money deposit, EMD, the performance securities, the bank, uh, bank guarantees, or they hire some traffic consultants to do traffic surveys. They actually uh, have a team which does the project preparation exercise. All those costs they also consider uh, while uh, estimating the cost. So ideally, we should also, while uh, estimating the project financial assessment we should also cover the project preparation cost in a uh, in a reasonable manner the construction cost which is uh, the total project cost when we look at the total project cost this includes your uh, construction cost the interest part during the construction on debt uh, the potential private player likely to undertake and also various other costs for example uh, uh, during the construction period, there will be a site office which will be developed or uh, re uh, retained or maintained by the private player. There will be a special purpose vehicle depending upon the nature of project. Uh, generally, concession agreement asks for a SPV to be formed and uh, operated for that particular project. So in that case, the overall setup and management cost of special purpose vehicle special purpose vehicle is nothing but a new uh, say private limited company or, or a public company now when they set up a public company or a private limited company there are say roc charges there are charges with respect to uh, governing board and honorariums there would be some staff there will be office setups so all those costs are also taken up uh, during the const or, or, and their audit will also be undertaken by some agency, so auditors fees, all these small, small costs, the cost add up to some number and those numbers are actually included in the uh, project costs. And then uh, during the operations and maintenance period, we look at the OM costs and various other costs which are likely to be incurred by the private player as per the terms of conditions, uh, terms and conditions of the concession agreement. And the ONM costs include their routine maintenance costs as well as their periodic maintenance costs. So when we compare in Excel spreadsheet the revenue minus cost in an annual basis or a quarterly basis, we have to prepare that Excel sheet for, for the duration of the concession period, which is defined by uh, which is broadly defined by some technical factors as well as this financial model also. So in this case, what we do generally while uh, doing this exercise, because at this particular stage, uh, ideally we should have done the uh, the traffic analysis, which gives us the uh, tollable traffic numbers, which will be multiplied by the toll rates and give us the broad toll revenue, uh, which is available, which is likely to be available in the next say 30 years or 20 years. Uh, we should have done the uh, broad design or uh, broad 
रिक्वायरमेंट इन टर्म्स ऑफ केपेक्स और कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर सो द सर्वेज द रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ ओवरले और मे बी कंस्ट्रक्शन रिकंस्ट्रक्शन द फ्लाई ओवर ऑल दो टेक्निकल इंजीनियरिंग आस्पेक्ट एंड कॉस्ट एस्टिमेट शुड है those form as uh, those become an input to this financial analysis and also uh, it should have uh, also considered what type of broad understanding is there in terms of concession period uh, in, which comes from the current practices the various best practices review and we keep it open at the first stage so for example when we do this financial analysis uh we prepare a financial model which can shrink to say 10 year to uh, or may extend to 30 years depending upon the nature of uh, that particular engagement or or that particular highway stretch and uh, compare when we when we compare this revenue and cost we also look at various options in in terms of funding so uh, the cost may also include potential funding costs which include your debt costs and working capital requirements so in some cases what may happen is the total revenue in in certain periods may not suffice and require some additional working capital from the private side uh because uh, say every 5 year if the private player is mandated to do major maintenance and the total revenue is not that uh, sustainable uh what they do generally is they either keep the first four years uh, revenue in a in a uh in a pool or they take working capital from uh, uh banks or institutions on on a short term basis and pay the cost of that so working capital or loan uh interest is also become uh, do also become their costs so that is also considered in this financial uh, analysis and while we do all these jugglers between revenues costs and structures we come out with certain outputs those are called uh, the 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 computation outputs which include in, internal rate of returns net present value debt service coverage ratio and other financial ratios so these are the indicators which give us idea about Uh, the viability of a particular project and fin- uh, finally based on these indicators we actually come out with a potential solution for a particular uh, project or a highway uh, wherein we see whether the grant is required or not whether there will be a revenue share or a uh, gap in in the in the overall uh, revenue versus cost so all these and uh, what are the additional fiscal incentives that those are required to make it uh, uh, viable so those those uh, calculations we do so i'll uh, further i have further detailed out that uh, all these things in the in this slide uh, which says that in in terms of overall financial assessments there are four types of factors broadly one is revenue which we discuss revenue for private side in a particular highway project which could include the user charges in terms of toll uh and other value capture uh, in terms of non toll revenues the cost which include the cost during the construction and that during the operations and maintenance uh, period now typically uh, depending upon the uh, technical design and technical assessment of a particular project we upfront decide how much will be the construction period for a for that particular project so during the construct uh, so overall concession period is divided into two parts one is construction period and the second one is your operations and maintenance period so if we look at a concession period of say 20 years uh, for a particular project to begin with or uh, to take as an example so and 3 years we consider that uh, that project will take in construction so we will take 13 uh, 3 years as construction period and 17 years as operations and maintenance period so during construction period there will be no toll revenue generally in in concession agreements if it is four laning two laning uh, highway projects so, so toll revenues are not allowed during the construction period that is also covered by the 
uh, ground rules or uh, the dictates of concession agreement in in certain cases so for example six laning or eight laning uh, the concessioner may be allowed to charge toll during the construction period so in that case we actually take that as as uh, income or revenue for during the construction period but otherwise in general parlance during the construction period there is this uh, uh, construction wherein we uh, the private player takes uh, money from uh, his own pocket and debt from lenders and invest that money in uh, construction and the activities he do is highway construction which is uh, a capital expenditure and is spread over the construction period in the financial model so there are uh, debt equity requirements or in in uh, while building the financial model we add a row with, uh, for grant for example in case the viability gap funding or other form of grant is required so we form, uh, we actually include this row and keep it zero to begin with and then see uh, how the financials are looking uh, uh, based on our assumptions and various aspects of that particular project. In this whole exercise of financial uh, or financial modeling, we also do consider taxes and depreciation because uh, if, if the concession agreement says that we have to, this particular concession has to have a special purpose vehicle or a new company which will operate this project only, then that project or company will be subject to tax because all the incomes are taxable. Uh, so that income tax will be uh, considered as an outflow from that particular SPV. And they will also be allowed to charge depreciation or amortization particularly because uh, in, in many countries, these are considered as intangible assets because the concession concessioner is given a kind of right to use that land parcel uh, or road parcel uh, for tolling purposes and is obligated to maintain. So they are not the owner of that particular land parcel. So they are allowed to be uh, charging amorti or amortizing their investments, not the depreciation and assets. So these are technical words, but in mathematical terms for private in player, it doesn't make a difference. if. The private player is investing, say, uh, 100 crores or 200 crores in a particular project. They would they would actually see that that 100 crore is spread over the concession period. So concession period, I would mean uh, O&M period in this particular case, because that depreciation will not be allowed during the construction period. So first three years uh, in this particular example will be the construction period, wherein he will keep on investing. So that will be the capex expenditure in the financial model. And when the operations start or the tolling starts in the fourth year, the particular concessioner will be uh, allowed to have depreciation or amortization. So 17 year is the band in this particular example, wherein the private player will be uh, allowed to have depreciation or amortization, whatever capital expenditure was made during the first three years and spread over that period for uh, calculation of profits so this actually this depreciation or amortization affects the profitability and consequently the tax uh, on that uh, particular investment and output indicators as we initially mentioned uh, include the project cash flows profit and loss account and balance sheet and through these three uh, spreadsheets we analyze the rate of returns uh, for the project and equity in terms of project IRR and equity IRR. We look at the free cash flows which will be available to the equity investors because that is an important parameter for the investor whether the project is viable and whether they would like to invest in that project or not. The cost recovery period in terms of how many years it will take to recover the overall equity investment to the private player. The debt service coverage ratio, which is nothing but uh, the lender's comfort, because if there are any particular periods wherein, uh, or there is any particular year wherein the revenue is more than the cost, say for example, in the fifth year of operation, the private player is required to undertake major maintenance. 
and uh, the major maintenance cost may vary and it may exceed the toll revenue of that particular year so in that particular year the lenders generally want uh, the private party to make uh, arrangements in the initial four years for that fifth year expenditure and that is called your uh, reserves so they create some reserves during the initial four years so that this expenditure can be made in the fifth year and the lenders debt repayment and interest repayment is made in time so and in in terms of mathematical calculation that number or that uh, uh, availability of cash is uh, calculated as debt service coverage ratio so the net availability of income minus expenditure in that particular year whether it is more than your interest and principal repayment which is obligated in your debt agreement or not is the debt service coverage ratio in in simple terms and then we also look at the net present value whether this project is uh, giving us positive returns on overall basis uh, at a particular discount rate or not so these are the overall calculations and factors which we consider while looking at the financial assessment uh, before we discuss about this overall input drivers and output, this is something which we have. Uh, I have just sir, 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 one minute. Sir. Sure. So, sorry, if the expenditure is uh, more than this, uh, I mean, uh, this thing uh, uh, income, uh, then uh, what about debt ratio, sir? What about if ex if expenditure is more than the income, sir? What about debt uh, uh, ratio? So uh, we look at this financial assessment from the cash flow perspective, right? So the debt service coverage ratio is one aspect and income and expenditure is second aspect. So uh, there are two uh, methods of accounting which works in, in, in uh, this financial feasibilities. Uh, one is cash flow method wherein the banks look at the cash position, the cash receipts, the cash outgoes which are uh, required and then the net cash availability. So DSCR is calculated basis that. Uh, but if you look at the income and expenditure, so income and expenditure is balanced. In some cases, there are non-cash expenditures also like depreciation or amortization. So the difference between cash and non-cash expenditure is the, the, uh, the importance changes. For example, for bankers, it is important whether you have sufficient cash in a particular year to serve the, their debt or not. Debt service means service of debt. So whether this ratio or cash flow is serving your debt in that particular year is not comes from the cash flow statement. But when we look at the income and expenditure, the, that is computed on an accrual basis. By accrual, what I uh, mean is in those uh, uh, revenue and expenditures, there are non-cash expenditures also like depreciation. The depreciation is nothing but whatever you invested in the first three years as cash outgo, uh, you actually apportion that in the next 17 years as a operations and maintenance expenditure. But there is no cash outflow in that case. So it may so happen because you are charging depreciation in a in and which is uniform or maybe WDV method yeah, during the ONM period, the profit may be in negative or zero but still you may have cash flows because of depreciation cash flow may be positive for a particular year because cash position is different from your profitability and the taxability is on profit which is broadly or generally defined as income tax act which runs on your accrual method of accounting so accrual method of accounting takes into consideration the non cash income and expenditure which you may not have paid but accrued to you during that particular year. And one of the expenditure that is allowed under Income Tax Act is depreciation and amortization. So that, that is a difference between uh, uh, the surplus or deficit in income minus expenditure, which could be negative also, but your cash flow position may, may not be neg in negative. And that is seen for income tax purposes. And DSCR is purely on cash flow basis which is cash inflows and cash outflows and the net cash, sur cash surplus in a particular year defines your 
DSCR, debt service coverage ratio. Uh, is it clear? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any other question on uh, this aspect? Because the whole methodology or the financial analysis revolve around this uh, broad structure, wherein there are input drivers. Input drivers are based on various technical assessments, technical studies, technical understanding, then assumptions on various aspects and the contractual framework or risk sharing, we can say, or the rights and obligations which we are assigning to that particular private party. For example, if our concession agreement says that you are allowed to have hoardings across the highway, which is not allowed as per Supreme Court law in many countries, I'm not talking about Indian context only, uh, but in certain countries, uh, the re revenue from advertisement is prominent. It covers some some of their O&M costs. So, so, for example, solar rooftops or solar panels along the highway or some other wayside amenities, those income uh, incomes can cover their routine maintenance or patchwork or maybe in some cases, say, uh, highway patrolling cost and so on. So those revenues, whether allowed or not, is defined in the concession agreement. And uh, because this financial feasibility go hand in hand, and typically before the preparation of concession agreement. So uh, in, in uh, doing the financial assessment, we need to be very careful that all those revenue drivers or revenue inputs, whatever we envisage in the financial model are duly captured in the concession agreement. So in some of the cases, what had happened was, we actually envisage uh, additional revenue sources in not in highway case, but in one of the other new sectors, in the financial model, made the financial assumptions, made it viable, uh, estimated the grant, but the particular consultants or the particular advisors uh, missed putting that revenue stream in the concession agreement and that RFP was released. And the bidders numbers were not matching them. Uh, the estimations or reserve price, which was kept uh, by the approving committee. And that led to a lot of uh, justification later, <coughs> whether why and how uh, these revenue streams were uh, not considered or not included in the concession agreement. And unfortunately, that those were uh, said that, OK, while the financial assessment was undertaken initially, and after that, the authority decided to forego or uh, not give those additional sweetness because uh, we thought that these are not uh, required. So that justification was uh, asked and given later. So that uh, this is a practical example which has happened not in India, but in a South Asian country, uh, wherein uh, the non toll revenues or non user charge based regular revenue was considered in the financial model, but not clearly spelled out in the concession agreement. So uh, why I am saying this is because uh, we are actually preparing this financial assessment uh, or modeling or uh, doing this financial feasibility exercise for a particular concession agreement or for a particular project. So all the conditions of revenue cost and all the responsibilities need to be clearly articulated in terms of mathematical numbers in this financial model. If we leave anything in terms of cost or revenue, which is the requirement or liability or uh, right of uh, the private party, our number will not match. And there are certain inherent examples uh, of not including them. So what happens is many a times we forget that the project approval, not in highway, but in non-highway uh, projects, uh, particularly emerging uh, sectors, the approval process takes three to five years in some cases, in some countries. And what as at the time of financial feasibility, we think that everything will be done in three months. And we forget that while estimating the cost, we have not considered that unforeseen or foreseen, but not politically acceptable uh, factor in, uh, in the CAPEX assessment. If we look at uh, the financial feasibility assessments being undertaken in Indian context also, 
around 2000 to 2005 this was the case because we used to take la longer time in analyzing or uh, seeking approval or actually awarding the engagement and land acquisition used to take the uh, maximum time what used to happen was the total project cost as written in the concession agreement used to shoot up and the lending or the private concessioners numbers go uh, used to go bust and the lenders used to create a lot of issues because the authority numbers used to say 1000 crores and the actual numbers or the concessioners estimates used to be 1400 crores and in this whole game what they used to do is they actually used to inflate much more to say 1600 crore and uh, instead of 70 percent debt bank used to lend 90 percent also uh, so that there is no investment from the private side and this actually led to a lot of issues uh, in the banking sector as well and in investor side as well so uh, in nutshell uh, while doing uh, while financial feasibility is, uh, assessment is nothing but a mathematical uh, addition or a subtraction but at the same time this is governed by the technical assessment the legal framework rights and obligations and the overall project scenario which as a package uh, one is envisaging for that particular project and this is to be considered from the private side so what is the cost to that private player in this particular project will be the cost of that particular project and will come as cost line items what will be the revenue which has been given as a right during the operations and maintenance period or the construction period to that particular private player will be taken as user charges or or this may be classified in various uh, categories but that will be taken as revenue for that uh, particular financial assessment in, in that uh, uh, model. And because this financial assessment or financial model is prepared considering private sector perspective, even if the public authority is preparing this financial feasibility, they are seeing that if we award this concession, what will private sector gain as revenue or user charge and what will be his likely expenditure then how much is the likely return to him so everything is done from his perspective not from public sector perspective and consequently any cost which is not likely to be incurred by the private player is kept out of this financial assessment or financial feasibility and classic example is land acquisition cost or the s uh, or say for example 50 percent of authority engineer or independent engineers cost which are considered separately but not considered in this financial feasibility which is done for the project for understanding the project IRR, equity IRR, or dscr etc so i hope that this is clear i uh, understand that there were classes with respect to this financial feasibility assessment and financial modeling earlier so I'll not uh, take much time now. Any question on this aspect? Yeah, Vishalji, I am having some uh, more or less requirement of depth understanding. Require viability gap funding scheme. That I wanted to get with most of the uh night and I some project of more than one twenty kilometer road in the plan of exercise. Which when if it is not viable once the beat has been invited and the work has been started, then what will be the amortization period of that twelve percent viability gap fund scheme which is being uh, disbursed by the government authority? And what would be the ultimate result of the project if some sanction has been or a financial sanction has been provided by the government authority? Because government was very much willing to start a project, but ultimately it could not get succeed on account of no response from any bidders on the BOT budget. Otherwise, government was very much willing okay, to that. give the 10% finance on that VGF ratio. Okay. Now, uh, there are multiple aspects to it. Uh, so, one is mathematical calculation of 12%. How you 
estimated your 12% is one aspect. Now, uh, winter's participation depends on various uh, factors. It, is, it may not be only the financial feasibility. It may be certain risks or certain liabilities which you would have passed on to that private player and which nobody was willing to take, number one. Number two, maybe political willingness or some other issues around the political interference, etc. also actually create or come as a deterrent in many cases. Non-availability of private players or non-availability of funds in the private players, for example, during this uh, last three, four years, exposure limits have uh, reached all the levels and so on. So money is not available. So what private players are doing is, or what player, uh, players are thinking about is that if, if there are five agencies who are actually coming up with the project, and I have money for three projects, so I will bid for the best of not, which is loosely but it may be from the private side, or which has balanced uh, understanding of risk and reward, which is not that risky in terms of execution, the land acquisition is complete or not. Now, when you calculated or the authority calculated 12% uh, VGF requirement, the gap would have come as the difference between this input drivers in terms of revenue and cost, and also the capital expenditure requirement. So, so for example, what happens is uh, you estimated that the project is uh, project require a capital investment of hundred crores. Say, take hundred crores as an example, and you initially thought that the private player, as per concession agreement, or is mandated to take at least 30% of the or invest 30% as an equity. So out of 100 crores, they will put 30 crores from their side. Now, balance they will either take as debt from funding agencies or if you have provided for any grant, which is viability gap funding, this is a grant during the construction phase, then this will be deducted from his overall investment. So what happens is if you consider in a 100 crore project, that 12 crore you will give as VGF, the project becomes 88 crore project. And then 88 crore is split into 70% of debt and 30% of equity. Now, why it splits at 88 crore? Because lenders, the debt uh, awarding agency or the bankers say that I will give you 70% of your net invest, total investment. Your total investment is 88 crores in this case, because 12 crores you have taken as viability gap funding. Viability gap funding has also evolved over the period. Initially, it used to be given during the uh, construction period only. Uh, when the VGF scheme started, and uh, say, for example, if I take uh, first example of 20 year of concession period and three years of construction and 17 years of ONM. So uh, whatever 12% or 12 crore VGF you envisage will be given to the private player depending upon the completion of construction, which is also defined in concession agreement during the first three years of uh, construction. So during this 100 crore requirement period, you or authority give 12 crore and stage to stage construction basis, which is invested in that project itself. So in a way, Amortization is not required. So what happens is for the private side, this project becomes 88 crore project. Wherein out of 88 crore, 30% of 88 crore will in be invested by uh, the private partner himself as equity, and rest 70% will be funded through bank, which will be which will come as a debt. So while doing that, what we do is during this uh, calculation of total cost. So the, the net cost becomes 88 crore and we depreciate or amortize only 88 crores during the next 17 years as depreciation. Because anything coming in the concession agreement as grant by the authority or the concessioner, uh, sorry, the concessioning authority will not be allowed in the uh, as amortization or, or as an expenditure by the income tax authorities. So in nutshell, this VGF is not considered as, as uh, 
money is spent by the private concessionaire and is net off during the construction period itself if the VGF is given during the construction period. Now, after a certain period of time, VGF scheme allowed some of the VGFs during ONM period as well. Now, during ONM period, that is kind of operations and maintenance expenditure support. The same treatment used to be same. Uh, it used to come as uh, the uh, receipt line item as government grant, which used to be net off from the expenditure and then income and expenditure used to be uh, uh, prepared. So I hope I am uh, able to clarify this part. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, Clear. Thank you. Any other question on, on uh, this overall structure? So um, whether the VGF we'll will be recovered later, sir? No, VGF is a sir, grant. We have funding. Will it generally be recovered it later recovered. from the sir no no generally is not recovered because viability gap funding you have actually given because the project was not viable itself had it become viable at its own you would not entertain any vgf vgf is a kind of capital expenditure support during the construction period so in in uh, you may not consider in a regular highway project wherein the toll or the traffic is high, but say for example in a uh, other district road or a MDR, uh, you may give it on a PPP basis. You may say that you apply toll, but the traffic may not be sufficient. Now, if the investment requirement is 100 crore and you see that that 100 crore investment and the toll revenue during the next 17 years will not yield any return and the return is coming in negative or less than his expectation of 15 16 17 percent on uh, as equity irr then uh, while doing this financial feasibility assessment you will bridge the gap or give this gap as vgf or the grant during the construction period and that is the money pumped in that project by the authority as a investment from their side which is non-refundable generally thank you sir. yeah so moving on uh, let me take a case study uh, this is uh, in one of the south asian countries uh, which uh, will not name uh, due to various uh, factors or reasons and i have uh, masked this case study uh, to make it a kind of uh, uh, neutral exercise and the numbers are actually for uh, uh, this discussion purposes and numbers may not be real so uh, in in this particular case a project was of 25 kilometers this was a brownfield and element of 25 kilometers uh, in the city itself existing project was four lane divided carriageway there were five bridges, one major bridge, and two culverts also. And the level of service was D. So uh, I need not explain this culverts, bridges, because uh, the members are more uh, knowledgeable in this particular field. Uh, so I am a chartered accountant, by the way. So level of service D, I broadly understand, but I may not be fully conversant with. Uh, so stretch classification was interurban so in this particular case they wanted to make it a 25 kilometer excess controlled expressway which will be six lane expressway and four lane of uh, service roads so actually it became a 10 lane uh, expressway there were five bridges which include uh, two river bridges also uh, one major bridge and two culverts so in this particular case, uh, while doing the financial feasibility or financial assessment, look at the overall uh, requirement while undertaking a financial assessment. We have discussed all of it. Uh, we had to look at the general aspects, the capital expenditure, operating expenditure, interest rate, debt repayment, depreciation, revenue, tax rate. 
in in a in an established sector or in in your region or area for example in india all these half of these are known or uh, assumptions are uh, available easily but in uh, other eco developing economies or economies in a foreign land for so say for example if somebody want to from india somebody want to advise or undertake this feasibility assessment in a south east asian country or some developed country the debt rate or interest rate or the depreciation uh, policies in those particular countries change it may so happen that the tax rates are also different tax policies are different so one has to consider all of it while doing the financial feasibility or financial analysis so first criteria was how much should be the concession period now concession period is also decided in certain extent or to a large extent by doing this financial feasibility or financial analysis also but on a broader level or on a, say best practices review or on a thumb rule basis we understand that this this particular type of project require a concession period of 20 years or 30 years or 50 years so for example in in uh, certain cases you would have seen that uh, in in noida also that concession period was long longer whereas in certain cases the concession period is 15 years or 10 years also so how much is the likely concession period how much is the road capacity how much is the pcu factor pcu factor gives us the revenue calculations because uh, what happens is when we calculate revenue in a in in indian context if we write right 65 paise for example is a uh, base rate 65 paise is the per pcu uh, or car is considered as one pcu uh, is the toll revenue per kilometer now if the project is of 25 kilometer i need to multiply 25 kilometer into 0.65 which is per kilometer rate and then multiply that by pcu factor car is one maybe small truck maybe two or large truck maybe three so that pcu factor is is the road uh, a damage factor which uh, has been uh, set as a norm by indian entity or uh, indian policy makers but it may not be true for various countries various countries do not have even the toll policy or understanding of how these pcu factors work so these these become a kind of base exercise for any any financial assessment and the pcu factors are discussed and agreed upon uh, while doing the financial feasibility assessment apart from that one has to look at the civil construction cost the construction period the phasing of the project how many how will the expenditure likely to incur because it may so happen that there are land acquisition constraints or there are constraints with respect to uh, developing that but sorry uh, so all those phasing of project related questions we need to ask and consider in the financial modeling and also look at the contingencies contingency in terms of uh, how much cost increase or decrease is likely because uh, when we do the feasibility assessment in a ppp the detailed design and the detailed cost estimates are not done generally which remain the responsibility of private sector so we put in a factor of contingency which generally is 5% or 10% we also look at all the operating expenses we discussed all this uh, some of this in the previous slides so i'll not go in detail again on the, these aspects so these are the broad aspects which we look at includes which include your interest rates uh, and uh, interest rate may vary during construction period and operations period because uh, the lenders see higher risk during the initial 3 years or during the construction because period because there is no revenue potential during the construction period typically and during operations and maintenance period interest rate may go down which actually increases the profit uh debt tenure is also important uh, which is also need, uh, required to be assumed in the financial model because debt tenure gives you uh, the leeway in terms of debt repayment period uh, it may so happen that uh, the concession or the project is of 20 years but the lenders want their money back in say 7 years or 10 years or 12 years maximum and uh, that will be the period wherein you will be required to compute that or uh, compute your cash flows for debt uh, repayments uh, in terms of principal and interest 
and your DSCR will impact this. Uh, there is a term called moratorium period, which is nothing but the leeway which is given by the debt uh, lending agencies after construction completion. So moratorium period, uh, uh, I hope everybody is aware, uh, but just to be on the same page, moratorium period is the period in during operations period wherein no debt repayment or interest repayment is in this house. So that is a kind of cool off period. Uh, during the construction period, debt repayment do not start. It is generally likely to start during the operations period. But if, say for six months of operations, bankers say that you need not repay my debt, that will become moratorium period. Then uh, debt repayment period we have already discussed. Depreciation method as per the country law, uh, straight line method, written down, w, uh, written down value method is something which uh, is applied. And then revenue. Revenue also include your total capacity. Leakages are also considered in many cases. Uh, there are uh, likely there are likelihoods of toll leakages depending upon the project location and uh, the law and order situation in that particular area also. And then tax rate and tax benefits are also considered. So uh, all these assumptions or facts. So some of these are dependent. For example, cost assessment, uh, the uh, major maintenance costs, etc. All these are dependent on technical uh, studies, technical graphic analysis, uh, design, the project uh, surveys and all. But in some cases, the, uh, the assumptions are based on market conditions, like what is the lender's uh, rate of interest or bank's lending uh, uh, terms and conditions, those are uh, implemented or sorry, those are included in the financial feasibility assessment. Uh, we do the same <clears throat> calculation basis these assumptions. We look at various drivers and assumptions, including say capital works and construction scheduling, routine maintenance and major maintenance, uh, financing and tax, traffic growth and uh, traffic and growth. Uh, potentials which I'll actually result in more or less revenue and these estimate these result these drivers result in the estimates of costs revenue and profitability and also the project structure is uh, consequently decided so this whole exercise if i again say that is the mathematical computation of overall project understanding in terms of technical uh, the legal and regulatory external factors, banking uh, factors, and the overall uh, expectations of private side. So whole of this gamut need to be considered while doing the financial feasibility and financial analysis. And if we leave any of these aspects, uh, which is not in line with the private sector expectations, the numbers will go drastically wrong. Say, for example, if uh, we think that the routine maintenance is 1% of the estimated project cost, and in real conditions, it is say 0.25% only, then your returns will change drastically. And your bid number or the reserve price may go wrong. In some cases, there are cushions which are kept while doing this financial analysis in terms of contingency numbers and the numbers are kept conservative so that the bid do not fail at the later stage because that this this whole financial analysis is a kind of uh, exercise which is done typically for reserve price also in in uh, various agencies and if the reserve price is less than the bid amount then the tender has to be reinvited. So in some cases, some cushion is built up in the construction cost estimations and so on, uh, but it should not be overestimated as well because uh, there are political scenarios, there are uh, practices which hint uh, or indicate the private party as to how much is our uh, estimation or how robust is our estimation because in, in a concession agreement, you uh, are required to say publish how much is the total project cost, TPC. And that TPC is nothing but the culmination or addition of your civil cost estimates, the contingency estimate, and other costs which are likely to be incurred by the private player. So if there is a 
cushion in this TPC estimation, then the private sector will know that uh, you have built in this contingency or uh, cushion and he will bid accordingly. So this has to be balanced. It should not be over conservative, but it should not be over aggressive as well while doing the financial analysis because both have merits and demerits. Now, in this particular case, we also had to look at the traffic levels. So, for example, uh, if I look at this particular uh, road stretch, say, uh, created a road stretch which was, so, or which may be divided into various sections while uh, doing the traffic analysis. So, uh, the, uh, the particular project was divided into, the, say, six sections in this particular case, and uh, the traffic level or volume count was also considered. And this volume was the total volume in terms of PCU factors. And why this was important? Because this PCU factor would have given me the estimation of likely revenue. Because whatever the tollable traffic comes in, in these sections, and each section will be uh, differently told because this also depends on tolling mechanism where we keep our toll plazas and this is also actually important to think and consider at this stage only whether i will be putting open tolling or closed tolling or uh, say distance based tolling now nhai in india is thinking about distance based tolling with through gps or gnss so in all those scenarios there is a potential impact and actual impact on the profitability or revenue of private player. Say, for example, if I create two toll booths and the project is access controlled, nobody can go out uh, before uh, but before crossing my toll plaza. Say, for example, my first toll is here and the second toll is somewhere here, then I will capture the maximum traffic. So. That's how for uh, during the traffic study, I have to actually uh, divide this into various sections and look at the potential traffic revenue on various sections. And uh, while doing the traffic count and traffic assessment, uh, we also generally do willingness to pay survey. Uh, we keep one thumb uh, thumb rule based number in mind. Say say for example, we say. Uh, as per the policy in Indian context, it is predetermined in uh, national highway, uh, but it may not be so for uh, states or some countries outside India. So what we take is as uh, say for we take one base number in our mind, say five rupees per kilometer as a toll for cars. So we ask the users during this survey whether you are willing to pay five rupees or not per kilometer so some people say may say no some people may say yes some people may write uh, give a rider saying that if you give me better service yes but if you can lower my number or this toll rate to four rupees i will be happy so we consider all this we do willingness to pay survey and see how many respondents are willing to pay this much amount how many are saying it should be lowered and accordingly decide on the various uh, uh, toll rates and this is this may you know, be considered if if the uh, corresponding legal and regulatory uh, mechanisms are not there in a particular state or in a particular country these are required some of these assumptions or things are streamlined through regulatory uh, mechanism or policies so in, in case those policies are there, those policies are uh, adhered to and taken as a uh, available assumption or given assumption in the financial analysis. Then we also look at the supply side and uh, do the supply side analysis while taking uh, that particular assessment, which include your alternate or competing projects, whether the traffic will move if, if even if after uh, constructing this road, uh, the toll is applied. Uh, then user may switch or may want uh, to use other competing roads whether those are available or not what is the regulatory mechanism so all those are also considered while uh, taking the revenue and the last part is the level of service so level of service actually broadly defines your uh, concession period what may happen is uh, say for example in any particular case in in the next 10 years say 22 to 20 
35, next 12, 10, 12 years, the level of service remain B. This is the uh, uh, based on our traffic estimates for the next 30 years. But if as we go along, some sections, because it's showing there 97,000 or 94,000, some sections may uh, breach the level of service, wherein the congestion will increase. So how long we can actually keep this stretch uh, acceptable to the private player is dependent on what kind of level of service we are offering and what kind of traffic volumes we are envisaging based on our analysis at this level. And this becomes one of the deterrent for increasing the concession period. So for example, in case uh, in 2045, most of the stretches or sections will have level of service to uh, uh, at as D C, and which means there will be a lot of congestion, and still people will be asked to pay a, a toll of say five rupees per kilometer. Then uh, we need to rethink, and may we may end up terminating this concession agreement because of uh, public uh, issues, and consequently, what we may do as 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 of today is that we keep our concession period with uh, up to 2045 only. So they, these factors also play a role in deciding the concession period. So in this particular case study, we actually looked at uh, the various uh, uh, traffic volume at various sections and also saw when we are uh, degrading our level of service, how much is the comfortable period for the concession and accordingly decided the uh, concession period and this was one of the factors in deciding the concession period now Visarji, uh, i am having of some the one doubt yes regarding uh, that uh, chronology of level of service to in which you have assigned the grade a b c d e f i think level of service comprising the operation is just maintenance of the existing stretches also right yes operation and maintenance of the existing stretches of the road constructed they have to uh, they have to maintain the road in the quite good and uh, good quality uh, of the payment quality up to the end of the tolling period that means 2045 right he might so, have been he, one minute sir he might yeah. have been projected the traffic volume also at the time of construction initial phase of the construction that i have to pass total 15 or say 20 million standard excel of the vehicles on that stretches which i am going to consider so on the same way he might have designed the road with respect to cross with respect to subgrade and pavement quality concrete or pavement quality bituminous layer now suppose the congestion is there and some potholes will be there or there, there will be some level of service there in terms of the uh, road deterioration so it it ultimately it comes on the commitment of the concessionary or BOT operator to maintain up to the A class services only. So how he can deny and he can inferior up to the D class or E class of the level of services at the so end of the concession. In this particular case study, I understood your point. Uh, so in this particular case study, what we did was we assumed or uh, understood or thought that uh, the pothole or the maintenance ONM of that particular stretch will be intact and it will be done in time. And the level of service degradation will happen due to increase in traffic, due to congestion. So the limited point was uh, because uh, we are doing the financial estimate as of today, which is the traffic estimate for the next 20 years or 30 years now we, we have to keep one deterrent in mind if actually the traffic increases beyond a particular capacity then the users will not pay the requisite amount in terms of user charges and the private party or the ppp project may fail so this is one of the factors we had taken to understand if it will breach the threshold limits and the level of service with respect to traffic volume and congestion reach the particular levels. And that was also considered to define the concession period. So that was the limited uh, uh, uses of that LOS in this particular financial analysis. But you are right. And we are assuming that the technical part is kept intact and the private sector 
is investing and spending the requisite money and the authority engineer or independent engineer is duly approving and checking that part in terms of pothole repair, the regular maintenance, the major maintenance, those are actually already built in as cost in this particular model. Now, what is not built in is the excess traffic, which may create a lot of congestion. So that factor also was taken in this particular case study. Is it making sense? Uh, so far, the latest uh, notification has been concerned from the more. Then, the with respect to the level of services, yeah. generally so it is what getting I'm trying to say is Indian con Indian considerations. Uh, there are yeah, yeah. this financial modeling is nothing but the culmination or uh, the matching of JS, legal, JS. regulatory, technical, right. financial, all these aspects. Now, MORT might have or NHAI might have already factored in these, these conditions, but this may not be true in a particular state or a particular country. Say, for example, Sri Lanka, Nepal, they might not have done it. So, while doing a financial assessment, uh, we are actually keeping uh, this as a parallel exercise for uh, various uh, considerations, okay, various authorities and various uh, agencies. And it may yes. not be true or same for all. All so that, that that's the caption I have or limitation I have. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Level of service related to traffic volume, uh, part of the we uh, design the uh, highway two lane, four lane, six lane, eight lane according to the level of service mm -hmm. uh, with the traffic volumes. Right. Not related to uh, one m or the construction mm -hmm. so we reach is... uh, at level of service uh, c or d then we have to uh, widen our road uh, reconstruct to four lane yes. to six lane six lane to eight yes, lane sir. eight lane to twelve lane something yes. so uh, my limited point is if we are doing a ppp concession now we are asking the private player and so as a chronology, what we are doing today is the financial analysis. Now, uh, assume uh, this is the financial analysis day. So as of today, I have done the traffic study for the next 25 years, 30 years. I have done the designing part of it and I have my traffic estimates. Now I have to do the financial analysis. Now I have to also consider all these factors and decide how much should be the concession period. Now, while deciding the concession period, one of the factors is when is it likely to breach the current level of service with the envisaged lanes? So, for example, I am designing this particular road for us from four lane to six lane. But it may so happen that next 20 years, it will survive with six laning. But 21st year, it will require seventh lane. That means the seventh, 21st year will require require change in concession agreement because seventh lane construction will not be done by the same private player. Now everything we are considering from this concession agreement and this particular project, if this project condition or change or require additional capital expenditure, that particular private party will not do. So ideally I should decide that my concession period should not go beyond 21 years because if I keep my concession period as 30 years and after 20 years the traffic is so that I require seventh and eighth lane there are two options with me either I terminate that contract in the 20th year because it will not serve the purpose or I give him additional work for construction of seventh and eighth lane as a variation because or I envisage that expansion today in the concession agreement itself and that framework has to be built in the concession so this at this stage i am actually deciding on those aspects my financial model will help me in deciding whether i need that expansion or not should i increase the concession period or not so these answers actually are coming through this financial analysis so the purpose is to actually understand whether due to traffic increase, 
there will be a breach in level of service or not and should i reduce my concession period or i in include my concession agreement provision saying that seventh and eighth lane or sixth lane to eighth lane has to be done by you only for example in roads not in roads airports airports what happens is there are runways now there are two runways in airport and say after 10 years because airport concessions are given for 30 years 40 years 50 years and we know that traffic volume will breach now the traffic volume will increase that means the terminal additional terminal building will be required and runway will additional runway will be required so with this whole exercise of financial modeling what we decide is when will this come uh, say based on my traffic analysis will this additional terminal be required in say t3 from t3 to t4 or a new terminal will be required in the 25th year or 35th year then my financial model will include that cost also if i decide that this concession period has to be 50 years then i need to include that additional uh, incremental cost in the 25th year in my model and also the runway cost as a capital expenditure second capital expenditure and then accordingly returns will increase but in general typical concession agreement in india there is no such condition uh, that the expansion from six uh, currently in visa six lane to say eight lane will be done by the same concession uh, concessionaire after say 20 years so typically in the current framework what is happening is we are actually uh, consciously uh, estimating that or guesstimating that and accordingly decide the concession period or maybe bypassing in some cases thinking that okay whenever the traffic will re breach or there is a there is a public issue then we will see we will either terminate that or the concessioner will go away so so all these things are happening in various pockets uh, but these factors uh, while doing the financial feasibility uh, in various regulatory and uh, uh environmental conditions external environmental conditions are required so that's the limited point so we are at uh 11 20. uh should we take some break uh for 10 15 minutes and come back hello so at what time shall we meet? Uh, I think uh, there were two sessions which were envisaged and at 11.15 to 11.30 there was a envisaged break. Uh, so I need two minutes break uh, but depending upon uh, everyone's consent we can take the 10 minutes break or 15 minutes break. Yes sir. Sorry. So, okay, uh, okay, yes. can we resume at eleven thirty, please? And oh, yes, yes, sir. yes. Sir. So, we'll continue with the same uh, discussion, and uh, uh, we'll we'll take up question answer answer in the next session. Okay, we'll we'll resume at eleven thirty. Thank you.
uh, when in level of service determine the concession is one of the factors for determining the concession period and should be considered uh, it really depends on the regulatory environment the concerned policies uh, and other aspects uh, whether we should consider this as one aspect only or we should uh, ignore this considering the political and external environment ideally should not do that um, and this will impact or affect the participation from private side so uh, we do that as as consultants we uh, take this factor as uh, one of the main criteria for determining the concession period <coughs> Apart from that, uh, while undertaking the revenue assessment, uh, we consider the type of toll plaza which is going to be in this, uh, going to be uh, required as per the concession agreement or which we are envisaging for that particular project. So, for example, whether the private player will have two toll plazas or four plazas uh, in that particular high highway stretch, how much traffic will end up uh, paying toll? A, at each of that uh, toll plaza and also consider whether we are going to charge a fixed price or a uh, distance based price also determine our uh, toll revenue so these these factors are considered <clears throat> i just need one minute i am getting a client call just give me Uh, sorry, I, sorry, I was getting a client call, so apology for this. So, uh, while considering the revenue uh, uh, for the uh, particular concession for our, our, our project, highway project, we uh, compute or analyze the rates which are available as per the uh, policy or which are benchmarked through various other projects in case the toll policy is not there in that country. So in, in this particular case, for example, uh, we thought that we will charge in case of car five rupee per kilometer. These are normative numbers. In Indian context, it is 1.45 rupees or 1.5 or 2, 2, 2 rupees per car per kilometer. Uh, but in certain countries, uh, the rates are higher and uh, it also depends on what kind of uh, highway it is because uh, if the elevated section is there then the toll rate can go up to 10 percent 10, 10 times of the uh, base toll rate as per the policy in indian context so uh, even if it is base rate is 65 pesa which is to be inflated but it can go up to 6.5 rupees uh, per kilometer in case of elevated section so this really is the regulatory uh, or policy uh, framework which is required to be considered in cal calculations or computation of the financial revenue estimate so we consider the pcu factor as we discussed earlier and we estimate the total revenue which is likely to come for from that particular project so in this particular case study if we recall the project was a six lane elevated or elevated come at grade uh, section interurban which had five minor bridges two bridges or culverts and all uh, the cost was uh, estimated at say 5000 crore rupees and the total toll revenue which was estimated was for the uh, particular period was 7700 crores now how do we actually put that in the financial model and how do we decide which mode of ppp should be taken up these are the basic input factors or basic calculations which go into financial model. Then we also uh, assume various costs as, as percentage terms or as, as base. 
say for example we uh, have to understand how much is the inflation in the country how much is the contingency cost which is likely which is uh, reasonable how much is the project management cost how much is the financing fees which is charged by the financiers or lenders how much is the interest rate in the country and then arrive at the total project cost and then also estimate what type of uh, maintenance are invisas in the concession which are required to be undertaken by the private player say for example routine maintenance or regular maintenance will be undertaken on a routine basis annual cost will be there periodic maintenance is required every fifth Year or make it many it or make it required at least four year at least it may require at least fourth year or sixth year depending upon what type of room we are constructing. The cost of operations will be different cost all these things. We uh do this analysis, assume and then and at least there are five, six models. Scenario parallels, there are models first This is will be given and financial instruction and operations are the private sector responsibilities, but in in case of land acquisition, this is a prerequisite from the government side and is not considered in the DPFOT tool method because we prepare this financial feasibility or financial model from the private sector perspective. How much will private sector be required to uh, spend as a cost at various uh, phases and how much will be his revenue? So, and that is the reason government investments and government costs are not considered in the financial model. If the project is not self-sustainable or viable and the returns are not ex to the expected level, say 18% equity IRR is not there or 14% equity IRR is not there, those are also uh, developed or framed basis the expectation of the private side in uh, various countries. Say in Indian context, uh, uh, we consider the uh, equity IRR of 14 to 16 percent depending upon the model as an optimum but uh, in real sense private sector increase their efficiency by reducing the cost the capex expenditure and that's how they invest they actually envisage higher equity return which is not uh, uh, reflected in the paper uh, even in the audits and all but the real term, in real terms, the equity returns, which is envisaged by the government as a benchmark of 14 to 60 percent, 14 to 16 percent, no, no private player actually remains interest interested when the interest rates are higher. Say interest rates in Indian context earlier used to be 10 to 11 percent. Now it has moderated. <clears throat> uh, in those scenarios, 14 percent returns, many developers uh, actually need more uh, interest, uh, more uh, returns and that that is achieved through savings in costs or increasing efficiency in terms of design and uh, maybe early achieving the CODs and so on so that is a separate aspect which uh, in some case uh, in doing the base analysis we do not consider uh, if the project is not self-sustainable we go for VGF VGF is generally uh, in Indian context given during the construction period as a grant and that reduces their overall investment requirement or uh, capex requirement and that is uh, deducted from the profitability consideration in terms of depreciation allowance and so on uh, if both these models are not generally acceptable we consider toll plus annuity annuity is a, a amount which is periodically paid by the government during the operations period generally annuity may be paid uh, during construction period also but then uh, that is 
the nomenclature may change but that annuity becomes the capital uh, grant plus annuity model and uh, we can think of uh, merging the toll and annuity in a particular revenue stream to make it viable in certain cases where the toll or user charges are or need to be retained by the public sector and the private is not given that tolling responsibility or the tolling conditions are not uh, conducive then the uh, models such as annuity hybrid annuity models or, or other form of uh, uh, government support are considered in a bpp annuities uh, are generally paid in operations and maintenance period and, and toll in such a case is collected by the uh, government in hybrid annuity which is a ham uh, certain percentage is uh, given uh, during the construction period say in the form of uh, capital grant which is generally 40% of tpc in indian context and rest of the money along with the interest and all uh, is paid as annuity during the operations and maintenance period in all these cases if you look at below the government investment in terms of land acquisition is uh, kept out and not considered in the financial feasibility uh, there is also one of the emerging models in uh, not in india but developing countries wherein ham plus toll is considered so toll responsibility is also uh, uh, given to the private player uh, and they keep that toll uh, the tolling revenues uh, at their own some capital grant is also required to be given and the net amount is given as a uh, annuity which which is a uh, kind of very uh, politically unacceptable model because if the private player is giving toll or uh, collecting toll also we are giving some capital grant also or say 40% uh, of uh, initial capital expenditure even then the project is unviable then the, pro uh, the actual uh, in actual terms the project becomes a social project and uh, it uh, may be considered depending upon the availability of funds as a epc project so uh, sir in this ham uh, ham plus uh, toll sir uh, uh, in this ham ham plus uh, toll sir hm mm -hmm. plus toll mm -hmm. but the toll is collected by third party or by the concessioner sir toll is connected by the concessioner third, third party or concessioner sir concessioner so it so this is the most unviable structure wherein the toll is also given to the private player the construction support in terms of 40 percent of uh, capital cost is supported by the private uh, the uh, concessioning authority and also annuity is required so this is a kind of practically unviable project but while doing the calculation we take various methods and various uh, permutations and combinations to look at the optimum ppp option for that particular sir, sir in ham sir Sir, in AM, government will be giving 40 percent, no, sir. Yes, in hybrid. Uh, so whether whether that whether that will be recovered later from the concessioner? No, this will not be recovered. In ham, uh, this part, this is a grant. Grant. Or capital grant is not recovered. It is outgo from the government side. So uh, I just clarify this through this financial analysis output. Now, we have taken one example of 5,000 crore as capital expenditure or initial fix, which uh, increased due to various uh, other factors like uh, your debt cost or uh, other incidental cost during the construction period. The capital investment or TPC became uh, at, or increased to 7238 crores. In a particular case, it was a toll model. 9000, what we added was interest during construction. We added the contingency costs, various other debt uh, costs, for example, financing costs, and so on. Accordingly, uh, we uh, calculated the capital investment as 7238 I am going to tell about face value. Sorry, sorry. Face value. 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 Face value.
Good morning, ma'am. Today I am going to tell about face value. And yes, Rao, sir, your mic is. Face value. Face value. Yes, Rao. The face value is the value of the digit Hello. I do not see any options. Four ninety-six. Hello. Can someone call me? Sir, him ko mute kar diya jaga na. I have no option to mute him. Uh, I think the host can mute only. Acha na, it's muted. Okay. Not muted till. Abhi unka chalu hi hai phone. Okay. मैं ये पूछ रहा था कि टोल प्लस हाइब्रिड एनुटी और टोल प्लस एनुटी वेजर डिफरेंस क्या है? ओके सर हाइब्रिड एनुटी प्लस टोल इस अ इस नॉट कंसीडर्ड इन इंडियन कॉन्टेक्स्ट हाइब्रिड एनुटी प्लस टोल में आर गिविंग कैपिटल ग्रांट ड्यूरिंग कंस्ट्रक्शन पीरियड आये चीप पली नॉट ये बंद कर दें इनका माइक और क्योंकि खुद है नहीं एक बच्चों को सोप रखा है ये क्या है नो कॉल सर कॉल सर इस म्यूट विपिन जी आये ची राव साहब सीएस राव साहब सुन रहे हैं क्या सीएस राव साहब सुन रहे हैं क्या सर काइंडली कॉल सर इफ टेलीफोन नंबर इज देयर सर विपिन जी देखो ना बैठ करो विपिन जी विपिन जी भी शायद है नहीं दिनेश जी हाँ सर बताइए बाय बाय I'm not able to do anything. Mute, unmute. Only host can do it. Uh, anybody has uh, Vipin sir's number? Sir, Sharma sir, we we having sir. Dinesh sir. Dinesh Sharma sir. I think no no नहीं है. ठीक है ठीक है continue करिए sir. Okay. So uh, let me let me first uh, complete this part. Uh, then I'll explain the models also along with this. So what we do is generally we first uh, start with the BOT toll model. BOT toll is the uh, model wherein the user charges in terms of toll suffice the revenue stream, and no other revenue is required. And there are certain stretches or projects wherein the toll revenue itself. Meet all the cost or meet all the returns expected by the private player, and in some cases, even the private player is able to share that revenue with the concessioning authority. This may be true in certain cases wherein uh, the traffic is very good at the initial stage itself, and that continues during the concession period, and that doesn't breach the required level of service or required uh, traffic. Uh, Number beyond the capacity of that particular road. So in in this particular exercise, what I'm trying to explain is that uh, how we look at various models, uh, put those numbers in various models, and uh, look at the outputs in terms of returns to the private player. <clears throat> so first we consider the capital investment or capex or TPC. These are the jargons which are generally. Uh, 
uh, understood in a PPP environment. We look at the overall capital investment requirement or uh, project expenditure requirement during the construction period. In this particular example, it was 7,238 crores, the first number in BOT toll table. Then we look at how much is the operations and maintenance expenditure, which is likely to be undertaken during the next, say, 12 to 17 years of operations and maintenance. In this case, it was 2,881. So if you look at uh, uh, the ONM cost in various models, it is same, but in certain cases, it reduces. I'll explain how and when it should and will reduce. Then we, uh, in this BOT toll model, the VGF or capital contribution, which is uh, say 40% or it may increase or decrease, it is considered as zero because the project is self-sustainable. The availability payment or annuity during the ONM period is also zero. And the investment of this 7,238 crore is likely to be incurred as debt and equity, 30% equity, which is 2,172 crores and debt of 5,067 crore. This is coming from the Excel sheet, which is a mathematical computation. I'm just presenting the outputs so that we understand how we decide on a particular model of PPP or mode of PPP using this exercise. Now, in this case, we are also expecting a total revenue of 7,600 crores. Now, ab initio, this project is unviable. Why? We are saying that the private player has to invest 7,238 crores during the first three years as capex and then also spend 2,881 crores in the next, say, 12 or 17 years of operations and maintenance period. On overall basis, 7,200 plus 2,800, around 10,000 crores is outgo from the private side. And the total revenue is 7,600 crores only, which is likely to come in the next 17 or 12 years. Now, NPV obviously will be minus, which is coming at 3,598. The returns are negative. The project return is minus 2%. The equity return is minus 15%. And debt service will not be possible. So the indicators are the output of Excel calculation. But we broadly know if somebody is required to invest 10,000 crore over 20 years, he should get more than 10,000 crore. Because the toll revenue is not sufficient, this project becomes unviable in BOT toll model. Now to make it viable what we do is we have a as a policy or a scheme we have bgf available up to 14 percent viability gap funding and in practice in other sectors also and in state context also uh vgf up to or grant up to 40 percent is available now what we do is we apply that 40 percent during the construction period as vgf in that model itself which reduces the TPC also. Why does this reduce the TPC? Any uh, any guesses? The total capital investment or total project cost was 7,200. And as soon as I apply 40% VGF, 40% VGF will be more, will be around, uh, say, 40% uh, of 7,000 is uh, 2,800 crores. But why the total project cost decreased from 7,200 crore to 6,974 crore? It is to be calculated why? at 60%, no, sir. No, no, no. Sorry, uh, come again. Why? Because 40% is being given by the government. From... Right. Hmm. So, but this it is not 40%, is... this decreased by 300 crores. Yes. The TPC decrease because my investment is not debt equity only. My investment is made by public sector in the form of capital grant or VGF, which reduced my debt interest cost during the construction period. If my debt is reduced from 5,000 crore to 2,900 crore, then my interest will reduce during this period. And that interest will reduce my overall total project cost by 300 crores. Let me repeat, instead of 7,000 crores, 7,200 crores, 
गवर्नमेंट विल पे मी टू थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड करोड एज वी जी एफ और फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ दिस नंबर दिस इज अट्रेशन विच है एंड इन सच ए केस माई इन्वेस्टमेंट विल बी अराउंड से फोर थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड करोड ओनली एंड वेन एम वेन आई एम इन्वेस्टिंग एज इक्विटी इंस्टेड ऑफ ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड एंड फाइव थाउजेंड थ्री थाउजेंड ओनली then my interest on 3000 will be lower and that's how my tpc will reduce because my tpc includes interest during construction which interest is on debt and my overall debt has reduced because my uh, 40% of the money is coming as a bgf or grant from the government which is say 2800 2800 crores so in this model what we assumed was we assumed that the bgf will be given as 40% of total estimated project cost and uh, which will be 40 uh, around 40% of the tpc during the construction period and in terms of annuity also available in terms of uh, annuity also which is which was also capped as 40% of onm this is a mathematical calculation this may or may not be true uh, for a particular project but if we are allowing this 40% during construction period also and onm period also then the project outputs change and in this particular case the return was increasing from minus 2% to 8% only in terms of project returns and equity return was 8% still there was no taker for this project i have uh, taken a slightly conservative example for mathematical calculation in this case in 8% also the private player was not interested the reason was the lending cost or the debt cost was 10% so nobody will invest equity excuse me 8% yes sir hello yes vishal ji ये थ्री सेवन फोर सिक्स अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ पेमेंट फोर्टी परसेंट ऑन ऑपरेशन एंड मेंटेनेंस इट कम्स अंडर वीजीएफ दैट मींस इट इज प्रोवाइडेड बाय गवर्नमेंट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ एन्यूटी इन सर्टेन थ्री थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड फोर्टी सिक्स करोड़ या आई आई क्लेरिफाइड दिस इन सर्टेन कंट्रीज यस नॉट इन इंडिया ओके इंडिया इट विल बी जीरो in certain countries the vgf is not only given during construction period at 40% of vg uh, 40% of capex but also 40% of onm costs or 40% uh, of the total cost uh, during the onm period sir sir iski jo hai 40% apan 7000 mane 7000 total project cost hai to onm uh, 3746 ki ho sakta na sir ये टीईपीसी का दिया था फोर्टी परसेंट ये हाँ ये दस हजार करोड़ का था लगभग नौ हजार करोड़ के आसपास हो गया था ना हमारा जो सिक्स थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड प्लस टू थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एट्टी वन इन दोनों का मिला के फोर्टी परसेंट दिया गया इवन देन इट वाज नॉट बिकमिंग वाइबल सर फोर्टी परसेंट हमने वहां दे दिया जो कैपेक्स कॉस्ट है फिर ऑपरेशन कॉस्ट का दोनों का मिला के फिर फोर्टी दे दिया तो उसको तो क्या है खुद को इन्वेस्टमेंट करने की जरूरत ही नहीं है सर सर तब भी वो प्रोजेक्ट वायबल नहीं हो रहा था और इक्विटी एरर वाज कमिंग एट एट परसेंट सेवन ये करीब आपका सिक्स 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 फाइव हंड्रेड हो गया हाँ जी और उसने इन्वेस्ट कितना किया था सात हजार दो सौ करोड़ इनिशियली या सात हजार करोड़ उसमें से मैंने तीन थ्री थाउजेंड करोड़ या ट्वेंटी सेवन हंड्रेड करोड़ पहले दे दिया बाकी फोर uh, करोड़ उसने पहले लगाया और उसको लेकिन टोल जो 17 इयर्स में 7000 करोड़ ही मिला उसका एनपीबी टर्म्स में बहुत कम वैल्यू आता है सो so, यदि यदि हम एनुअलिटी में 40 परसेंट देते ये ओएनडी में देते हैं 40 परसेंट तो ये कैलकुलेशन आपकी पॉजिटिव हो जाएगी सर सॉरी क्या करेंगे सर ये जो एनुअलिटी में आप � या ओएनएम का 40 परसेंट है ये कुछ दिमाग में नहीं बैठता है 40 ऑफ़ ऑफ़ द द टोटल प्रोजेक्ट प्रोजेक्ट कॉस्ट कॉस्ट इट कम्स 2789 10,000 आप गिन लो फिर ये 40 परसेंट और फिर 3746 कैसे आ गया ऑपरेशन एंड मेंटेनेंस ऑपरेशन एंड मेंटेनेंस कॉस्ट और नेचुरली लेस देन ओवरऑल टोटल प्रोजेक्ट कॉस्ट नो 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 सो ऊपर आप देखेंगे तो उसमें लिखा है 
so a particular it's it's not prevalent in indian context it's it's a case study from uh, one of the other countries wherein they allow your total estimated project cost hai na 6900 plus 2881 ka iska 40% tak onm period mein bhi de sakte hain so wo jo 10000 crore hai lagbhag uska 40% 3700 crore aur diya unko 17 saal tak pump karte hain tab bhi wo do you mean, do you mean that pehle wo 2789 pe dega aur baad mein 3746 pe dega तब तो ये ज्यादा हो गया ना मोर देन फोर्टी हो गया थ्री सेवन फोर फोर सिक्स प्लस टू सेवन एट नाइन इट कम्स टू अराउंड सिक्स थाउजेंड करोड़ हाँ तो ज्यादा हो गया आई एग्री बट इसमें इतनी पॉलिसी होने के बाद भी वो प्रोजेक्ट वायबल नहीं हो रहा था वट आई एम ट्राइंग टू टेल यू इज तो फाइनेंशियल एनालिसिस एक्चुअली गिवस रिजल्ट ना ये तो मैथमेटिकल कैलकुलेशन है तो वो पॉलिसी वहां पर इतने इतना ग्रांट देने की थी तब भी वो प्रोजेक्ट वायबल नहीं था रीजन ये था कि 10 लेन का एलिवेटेड स्ट्रक्चर बनाने की बात थी 25 किलोमीटर का ओके सो इन दिस केस इट्स डिटरमिनेशन ऑफ मेथड मतलब कहने का मतलब ये कि ये फाइनेंशियल एनालिसिस है दिस इज अ कमर्शियल डिसीजन के लिए फैक्टर्स हैं इसमें सो so अगर ये आप नहीं देंगे तो दिस प्रोजेक्ट विल बिकम अगेन इक्विटी रिटर्न विल रिड्यूस टू से जीरो और वन तो सर इनिशियली सर सर इनिशियली द गवर्नमेंट शुड हैव थॉट ऑफ इट ना सर बिकॉज़ इट इज नॉट वायबल एंटायरली इट इज नॉट वायबल इन स्पेट ऑफ गिविंग ग्रांट्स इन स्पेट ऑफ गिविंग ग्रांट्स राइट सो अभी इस प्रोजेक्ट में सो इन दिस केस व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इज आप आप एक इनविसास कीजिए आज की तारीख में जब मैं फाइनेंशियल एनालिसिस कर रहा होता हूं तो मुझे यही पता होता है कि ये मेरे को 25 किलोमीटर का प्रोजेक्ट बनाना है ये इसका डिजाइन है ये इसकी कॉस्ट आ रही है मेरी ट्रैफिक के हिसाब सर सर ये तो पहले ही होंगे होंगे ना ना बिफोर टेकिंग अप प्रोजेक्ट सर फाइनेंशियल एनालिसिस गवर्नमेंट शुड नॉट टेक अप ना सर दिस बिल्कुल बिल्कुल नहीं बैठ रहा था फोर्टी फोर्टी परसेंट एंड पोलिटिकली इट वॉज नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल की मैं सात हजार करोड़ दे दू और इतने का तो प्रोजेक्ट भी नहीं है तो वाई शुड आई गिव इट ऑन पीपी बेसिस then we looked at other model what we looked at was toll plus annuity ki aapka ye project suppose same rehta hai 7200 crore ka hi rehta hai aur operations cost bhi same rehti hai 2800 crores ki then how much is the annuity you need to pay annuity ka pay hoti hai agar aap annuity model indian context mein dekhe to same hai annuity model india mein kya hota hai annuity model mein you do not pay anything during the construction period of 3 years but as soon as the cod is achieved in the next 17 years you start paying this number uh, uh, on a six monthly basis in some cases in some countries it's annually also so depending upon what is the rule you apply so is case mein har 6 mahine mein annuity deni thi aapko 17 saal tak and that absolute number was coming to 15500 crores now investment usne 7000 crores ka hoga sir fir ha काफी ज्यादा होगा ना सर गवर्नमेंट गवर्नमेंट पेमेंट पेमेंट तो आज का पैसा एक रुपए बीस साल बाद तो आठ रुपए के बराबर होगा ना गवर्नमेंट के पास आज सात हजार करोड़ होता था वो इपीसी में बना लेता राइट सो दिस होल पीपीपी मॉडल कम्स वेन गवर्नमेंट है और मेरे पास सात हजार करोड़ रुपए अगर आज होते सारे प्रोजेक्ट के लिए तो मैं ये प्राइवेट इन्वेस्टर को 2000 करोड़ रुपए इक्विटी और बैंकर्स को 5000 करोड़ रुपए डेट की तरह से देने के लिए बोलता ही नहीं मैं सीधा अपना पैसा पंप करता जैसे मिडिल ईस्ट में होता है और उसको प्रोजेक्ट बनवा लेता अपना और बाद में बेच देता उस प्रोजेक्ट को जैसे आजकल टीओटी मॉडल चल रहा है बट अगर इफ आई एम नॉट इन्वेस्टिंग इन द कंस्ट्रक्शन पीरियड फॉर थ्री ईयर्स इनिशियली सेवन थाउजेंड प्राइवेट सेक्टर इन्वेस्ट कर रहा है तो उसको प्रॉफिट भी चाहिए उसको जो डेट लिया उसका लोन रिपेमेंट भी करना है और अगले सत्रह साल तक इन्फ्लेशन भी होगा तो अगर आप नंबर टर्म्स में देखेंगे तो आप उसके दस हजार करोड़ के बदले पंद्रह हजार करोड़ ही दे रहे हैं आप डेढ़ गुना बीस साल में 
तो अगर आपको कोई बोले कि आज का पैसा आप मुझे दे दो सौ रुपए और बीस साल बाद डेढ़ सौ ले लेना तो मैथमेटिकली आपको लगेगा सस्ता है सर प्लस इसमें टोल रेवेन्यू भी होगी ना सेवन थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड राइट टोल रेवेन्यू भी है तो वही कैच होता है मैं इसीलिए जान के चुप रहा था मैंने सोचा की समबडी शुड टेल दिस तो एक्चुअली पंद्रह हजार करोड़ में वो वायबल नहीं होगा बिकॉज यहाँ पर सात हजार छह सौ करोड़ का टोल रेवेन्यू भी है बिकॉज दिस मॉडल इज टोल प्लस एनविटी तो एक्चुअली में वो दस हजार करोड़ के बदले मैं कितना दे रहा हूँ ट्वेंटी थ्री करोड़ और आप थम रूल के हिसाब से सोचिए कि अगर मैं दस हजार करोड़ का इन्वेस्ट कर रहा हूँ ओवर ट्वेंटी ईयर जिसमें से कि मेजर इन्वेस्टमेंट मेरा शुरू के तीन साल में हो जाता है तो बीस साल में अगर मैं डबल पैसे दे रहा हूँ बीस साल में अगर मैं डबल पैसे दे रहा हूँ तो बैंक की एफडी से अगर आप थंब रूल पे कंपेयर करेंगे सो दिस विल गिव यू अ ब्रॉड अंडरस्टैंडिंग कि बॉस ये मैं डबल दे रहा हूं तो मोटा मोटी ये मेरा पैसा एक्स्ट्रा नहीं है लेकिन अगर आप इसको डिस्काउंट करेंगे एनपीवी टर्म्स में एंड एंड इफ यू अप्लाई योर एनपीवी रेट एज अ लोअर रेट जैसे गवर्नमेंट को पैसा जो है 5% 6% में मिलता है अगर आप इसके डिस्काउंटिंग लोअर रेट पे करेंगे तो आपको वो प्रॉफिटेबल कम दिखेगा बट अगर आप जैसे ही आप हायर रेट पे एनपीवी करेंगे तो उसका प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी बढ़ती जाएगी बट अगेन वेन बी लुक एट दिस मॉडल बीओटी टोल प्लस एनवीटी एक तो वो टोल कलेक्ट करने का राइट मिल रहा था सेवन थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड करोड़ और उसको हम बोल रहे थे कि आप एक नंबर कोड करो ये बिडिंग पैरामीटर होगा एंड नंबर कोड करके वट एवर नंबर यू कोड विल बी गिविन टू यून सिक्स मंथली बेसिस so this model told me ki uh, the project can be made viable ab isme automatically 15% ki return aa gayi which was my expected return ye kaise aaya hoga ye is tarah se aaya because when i was doing this computation this was my target return and ye number jo hai ye input ban gaya tha mera availability payment ya annuity वो एनविटी में 300 करोड़ डालता हूँ पर मंथ पर आ, पर सिक्स मंथली तो ये से 13 परसेंट आ जाता है अगर मैं इसको बढ़ाता रहता हूँ या घटाता रहता हूँ तो वो उससे दिस आयर आर कीप ऑन चेंजिंग जैसे ही ये 15 परसेंट आता है आई स्टॉप माय कैलकुलेशन एंड जो मेरी कैलकुलेशन में नंबर आके जहां पर 15 परसेंट बैठता है दैट बिकम्स द एनविटी नंबर एंड दैट बिकम्स द रिजर्व प्राइस इन दिस मॉडल So, yeah, iteration, financial analysis में मैं करता हूं एंड दिस बिकम्स द इनपुट दिस अवेलेबिलिटी पेमेंट नंबर और एनविटी नंबर इज इट क्लियर इस मॉडल में क्योंकि आप एनविटी डिसाइड कर रहे हैं प्री डिसाइड कर रहे हैं कि इतना मैं मैक्सिमम दूंगा या ये दिस बिकम्स अ रिजर्व प्राइस फॉर यू बल्कि पुराने वाले एज अगेंस्ट अदर मॉडल वेर इन द टोल रेवेन्यू इज मार्केट डिपेंडेंट The viability cap funding is capped at forty percent. You can only pay up to forty percent. But in this annuity model, you estimate how much is the six monthly or annuity payment required to achieve the fifteen percent return or expected return which you want. So in this case, your parameters will be okay. Your debt service coverage is one point five, means you are earning one point five times of money every year. uh or uh, not earning heavy cash uh, balance to pay your uh, debtors you will end up having equity return of 15% project is giving you 11.4% of return and in net present value terms also it is giving you 1200 crores for the uh, private player but in this case these are derived numbers because you are targeting 15% return and then you are calculating how much will be the annuity requirement and you keep it keep this annuity as a benchmark number same is the case with annuity model if you keep start comparing this bot toll model and annuity model you will see that there are resemblances the capex will remain same 7238 7238 operations and maintenance cost will remain same 2881 uh, sorry at uh, 2776 it will reduce slightly because uh, the model name is bot toll and uh, sorry toll plus annuity and annuity the difference will be that toll collection cost will reduce in the annuity model because in annuity model what you do is toll collection responsibility remain with the 
पब्लिक सेक्टर गवर्नमेंट गवर्नमेंट तो गवर्नमेंट की जो टोल कलेक्शन के जो चार्जेस होते हैं टू पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट टू परसेंट रिड्यूस इन दिस मॉडल फॉर द प्राइवेट बिकॉज आप जो मॉडल बना रहे हैं दैट इज फ्रॉम प्राइवेट सेक्टर परस्पेक्टिव ये प्राइवेट का कितना खर्चा होगा तो टोल प्लस एनविटी में उसका ज्यादा खर्चा होगा ओ एन एम में और खाली एनविटी में उसके टोल कलेक्शन चार्ज जो कॉस्ट है ढाई परसेंट की वो कम हो जाएगी तो इसीलिए वो ट्वेंटी एट हंड्रेड से घट के ट्वेंटी सेवन हंड्रेड रह गया इस केस में बिकॉज वी वुड है टोल कलेक्शन का टू परसेंट या टू पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट एज कॉस्ट ऑफ टोल कलेक्शन कॉस्ट सो इस केस में कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर विल रिमेन सेम ओ एन एम कॉस्ट विल स्लाइटली रिड्यूस बिकॉज टोल की रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी आपकी कम हो गई है देन वी ऑल्सो कैलकुलेटेड के डेट इक्विटी कितने परसेंट होगा वो सेवेंटी थर्टी का ही रेशियो रखा हमने एंड वी थॉट की द ऑप्टिम रिटर्न फॉर द प्राइवेट सेक्टर बेस्ड ऑन इंट्रैक्शन एंड लोकल कंडीशन फिफ्टीन परसेंट इक्विटी आर आर चाहिए हमें एंड बेस्ड ऑन दीज डिजायर्ड आउटपुट्स एंड इनपुट्स वी एस्टिमेटेड अवेलेबिलिटी पेमेंट जो हमारा है वो ट्वेंटी टू थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड करोड के आसपास जाएगा Now, if you compare this model with toll plus annuity, you will realize that fifteen thousand five hundred plus seven thousand six hundred. Thirteen thousand. Twenty three thousand. Twenty three thousand, and this is also twenty two thousand seven hundred. Mota moti बराबर है. Near about same. Near about because यहाँ पर उसको daily पैसा मिलेगा toll plus annuity में. See, because we are doing a mathematical computation in Excel on an annual basis or quarterly basis. The real numbers will slightly change because. So, but but what about tolls issued by the government, sir? Ha. So, in this case, twenty-two thousand private player will have to pay, and the toll collection for the private will be zero. But the net outgo will again be twenty-two six hundred ninety-nine minus seven six seven six. So, it will be a little less. थोड़ा कम हो सकता है बिकॉज अगर गवर्नमेंट खुद टोल कलेक्ट करेगी तो हो सकता है वो सेवन थाउजेंड सेवन ये ना कलेक्ट करके इसमें कम कलेक्ट हो लीकेजेस ज्यादा हो जाए हो सकता है ये हो जाए कि टोल ऑपरेटर की कॉस्ट बढ़ जाए आपकी तो दिस नंबर विल चेंज ये जो मॉडल है इसमें नहीं आएगा वो कंप्यूटेशन बिकॉज ये अगेन प्राइवेट सेक्टर के परस्पेक्टिव से बना रहा हूँ मैं मॉडल एनवीटी मॉडल में प्राइवेट सेक्टर की क्या रेवेन्यू और क्या कॉस्ट होंगी वो यहाँ पर आपको शो करना है बना गवर्नमेंट रही है लेकिन प्राइवेट सेक्टर के परस्पेक्टिव से बना रही बट हाउ हाउ गवर्नमेंट इज स्पेंडिंग ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ दैट से 20 इयर्स 23000 नो सर माइनस टोल कलेक्शन यस माइनस टोल कलेक्शन यस माइनस टोल कलेक्शन एंड माइनस सम टोल नेट टोल कलेक्शन कह सकते हैं आप यस सर बिकॉज उसमें टोल ऑपरेटर के चार्जेस भी आपको माइनस करने पड़ेंगे सो ओवरऑल जो गवर्नमेंट का जो मॉडल है वो अलग से बनाना पड़ेगा कि गवर्नमेंट की नेट आउटगो कॉस्ट कितनी है That will be your uh, private sector को आपको कितना देना है टोल कलेक्शन चार्जेस कितने हैं लैंड एक्विजिशन कॉस्ट शुरू में कितनी आ रही है तो टोटल आउटगो उसका कैश फ्लो अलग बनेगा सो दिस एग्जाम्पल इज गिविंग वेरियस मॉडल्स एंड ऑप्शन एंड डिसीजन फैक्टर कि आप अगर uh, किसी पीपीपी प्रोजेक्ट को देख रहे हैं दीज आर द गिविन कॉस्ट एंड रेवेन्यू स्ट्रीम्स तो आप कैसे डिसाइड करें आपने देखा इस इस मॉडल में अगर टोल इतना कम है और कॉस्ट बहुत हाई है तो बीओटी टोल टोल प्लस बीजीएफ टोल प्लस बीजीएफ प्लस ओ एन एम बीजीएफ ये दोनों मॉडल फेल हो गए देन यू हैव द ऑप्शन कि हाइब्रिड एनिटी में जाए या एनिटी में जाए आपको शुरू के तीन साल पैसा लगाना है या नहीं लगाना है हाइब्रिड एनिटी में आपको शुरू के थ्री ईयर्स में सम ग्रांट इज गिवेन बट एनिटी में यू आर नॉट गिविंग एनी ग्रांट इन द फर्स्ट थ्री ईयर्स तो उसके वजह से आपका कॉस्ट बढ़ जाएगा थोड़ा सा और नाउ व्हेन वी लुक एट साइड सर फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट साइड व्हिच वन इज द बेटर सर आई मीन लिस्ट स्पेंडिंग अह ओवरऑल ओवरऑल लिस्ट स्पेंडिंग ओवर द पीरियड ऑफ 17 इयर्स इट एक्चुअली डिपेंड्स ऑन प्रोजेक्ट द द बेस्ट ऑप्शन इज बीओटी टोल वेयर इन द कॉस्ट्स आर केप्ट ऑप्टिमम एंड द The concessioner is able to re, uh, collect all the revenues from the toll. So BOT toll may government spending is zero, but because of external factors and because you can't increase your toll revenue, you can't increase your toll rates, 
But so that is not viable, na sir. No, right now it is not viable. So out of this, uh, Ali sir, uh, Ali sir, let me, Ali sir, let me clarify. I had operated number of projects on tall as well as ham as well as annuity. Government is generally prefer on tall based BOT only and only. But when there is a political pressure and demand and VGF is not maintaining, then it is necessary to construct the BOT project. Then and then only government and there is not sufficient grant allocation or budgets on the government. government hand then and then only nut is prepared otherwise nut will be never be prepared always uh, bot based toll by boot is the best for government choice thank you sir. okay sir thanks sir so government will always want ki free mein uh, project ho jaye users sara pay kare but uh, that is not possible in all the cases or socially politically or various factors are there so bot toll is the most preferred model which has happened in india also some many projects not some have been awarded in a dbfot many have failed also because in some cases what had happened was the traffic was four times or five times more than what was expected delhi gurgaon expressway the first bot toll project everybody thought that there will be a negative grant and the uh, in fact in the concession agreement there was a column of how much grant you want there was no column of revenue share till that time nobody used to could imagine that this much traffic will be there on delhi gurgaon express rail but the private player quoted minus grant or said ki i will pay you this much but still this could not sustain because of political pressures because the traffic or profitability was so huge that the users or public uh, raised concerns and uh, there were uh, other factors also the developer was also not uh, up to mark so overall the project collapsed but i would say that was the first successful project and that actually showed the path for ppps in india in in some sense because till that time uh, ppps were at at doldrums or at a very nascent stage uh, particularly in the matured market and matured sectors but at the same time as as we grew as we had a uh, lot of bot toll projects toll traffic was underestimated or overestimated by private developers lenders were cautious uh, projects did not uh, yield that much money everybody was cautious and that's how nut project or hybrid nut models were con- uh, envisaged and considered and uh, right now many projects are being awarded on a hybrid nut mode which is expensive it's not cost effective because what you are doing is you are giving private developer their desired return and return to private uh, equity investor will always be higher than the cost of government capital but at the same time it is your uh, what you say uh, it's it's your uh, uh, you have no other choice lack of options because you have limited money as government and uh, private player is not uh, willing to take up the risk of tolling you, you are deferring your payment to next 20 years in uh, in other words in hybrid entity model you are only investing 40% money 60% you are taking a loan uh, as a loan or investment from private sector and repaying in the next 17 years in the form of annuity so in this particular case i think there is some disturbance which is starting in my neighborhood so i uh, if, if this continues i'll uh, maybe uh, slightly prepone the discussion so uh, from the nvt model uh, we also looked at hybrid nvt model wherein uh, the cost reduced and the reason was same because 40% very similar to the second model Uh, which was toll plus uh, tpc uh, model uh, this in this case 40% was considered as a vgf or not vgf i will say capital grant uh, which was 40% of tpc this will be 6974 into 40% in hybrid annuity generally in various countries it is on it is applied on uh, civil cost also because uh, people were not very comfortable on because this if if we keep it as tpc tpc will reduce or change due to various estimates and debt cost so in karnataka for example i remember they fixed it at 
uh, 25%, 40% of capex, estimated capex by them. And they put that number as a fixed number. So it really depends on how you build your concession and what is your regulatory mechanism with respect to uh, allowing that percentage. If you are not bound by uh, any rules of hybrid entity model or VGF requirement of 40% or if you are not seeking any grant in a scheme, you can refine your own rules. In Karnataka, I remember they did 40% of civil cost. And because civil costs remain fixed more or less, which is estimated by the authority, they said that we will pay you, say, uh, 5,000 crore ka 40%, 2,000 crore. Rest will absorb in annuity. Annuity will increase definitely, but they simplified the mechanism. Instead of uh, making it complicated or complex for uh, uh, the officials for computation and the authority to compute every year, they simplified the process and said that we will pay you this much money during the three years and rest you quote. So in this particular case, uh, in case in, in hybrid entity model, uh, I assume everybody know that 40% of the TPC in Indian context is paid as a uh, capital grant during the three years. So the total TPC again reduced because of debt cost uh, reduction. ONM cost also reduced in hybrid entity because tolling collection, toll collection remain the responsibility of public. So that's how their cost reduce. Uh, the VGF requirement or the capital contribution or you say uh, capital grant during construction period of three years uh, reduced to 2,789 crore. And in this particular case, to achieve the 15%, again, the outputs below 15% of equity return, 11.4% of uh, project return, this all remains same. The NVT requirement was 14,200 crore. Now, if you again compare this model, in this case, you are paying six monthly amount for 17 years, in uh, which is adding to 14,200 crore, and you are paying VGF of 2,700 crore. So total payment is around 17,000 crores. And 17,000 crore plus 7,600 crore is your toll revenue. Sorry, minus. <clears throat> So in this case, your outgo is 17,000 crores and you will earn 7,600 crores. So net outgo will be somewhere in the range of 9,500 or 10,000 crores. Whereas in annuity model, you are spending 22,700 crores and you are earning 7,600 crores. So your net outgo is around 13,000 crores. This is expensive in absolute terms. Merely because you have invested 40% in the construction phase only and, and that cost initially reduced by 300 crore itself as interest cost during the uh, first three years period, this became cost effective for you. So hybrid annuity model is in absolute value terms uh, better than annuity model. Now, if you want to further uh, give leverage to private player and say that the toll collection will remain with a uh, private player. Then what happens? In this particular case only, uh, the toll collection was given to private player, which was 7,676. Uh, 7, the private player will redu uh, reduce its annuity requirement from 14,000 to around 7,000. 7, the numbers do not match because in this particular case, the private player will collect the toll on a daily basis. In Excel computation, it, it will be dependent on the traffic flow, wherein uh, the traffic may increase or decrease in the year and season. Uh, that's how your numbers will be slightly higher or lower. So just on an average or on a thumb rule basis, it is 14,200 crores. And in this case, it is 14,600 crores, 670 crores. So motor moti, it's a difference of 450 crores. And that reason is that there is a variation in that traffic flow re uh, revenue due to traffic flow. And in this particular case, Ham, you are actually paying steady amount every six months. He is not earning on a daily basis. So this number can also change depending upon whether you are uh, preparing your financial model on a quarterly basis or annual basis. Because if you are preparing on an annual basis, 
there will be a slight variation in this but on in nutshell hybrid nvt mode or toll plus nvt mode uh, both are more or less giving same results now what are the risks in this particular case the risk is toll collection responsibility if you pass on to the private player they will they will do their own survey and their revenue estimates will not be same and consequently the estimation may not be same as you are estimating as public sector authority so hybrid entity is the safest bet wherein you both the parties know how much is the cost how much you, you are actually uh, committing as annuity payment first four years first three years and next 17 years but in toll model whether it is bot toll or toll plus vgf or toll plus annuity hybrid annuity the toll revenue itself has a risk which is dependent on market and anybody can uh, take that uh, or assume that market risk in an aggressive manner or conservative manner generally people remain conservative unless they want to win the bid and have their market strategy differently the authorities may end up paying more in toll models but on an overall basis because in toll model the private sector is responsible to collect that toll from users and leakages are less so <clears throat> on a broader term the impact is lower in toll models and it's best that the projects are awarded on a bot toll model or toll plus some form of grant model so in this particular case uh, we examined uh, various models basis the difference in costs and revenue potentials we estimated various scenarios like for example this we may debate that uh, this is uh, not profitable in indian context it is not practicable also because uh, nobody will give you vgf beyond the uh, 40% of uh, capital cost it is true but in certain countries these are available we estimated uh, or one can estimate this revenue potential or payment mechanism as per the ground uh, realities or local uh, local rules and regulations and various models can be uh, analyzed so in this particular case uh, say for example these six models were uh, analyzed and uh, uh, we said okay uh, uh, in in the particular uh, case wherein uh, the toll collection is very low the costs are very high either you go for hybrid annuity mode or toll plus hybrid annuity mode toll plus hybrid annuity is nothing but hybrid out of hybrid annuity you are giving the tolling responsibility also to the private player he has some upside in that sense and uh, once we looked at these numbers in various models and various outputs we then uh, look at the uh, detail indicators and uh, acceptability at various levels and produce the outputs of that particular project so for example in this particular case once the model is broadly understood or decided or recommended by the authority or consultants say ham model is uh, proposed so in ham model one has to see how much is the overall basis how much is the cost what kind of onm costs are there what is the government's initial contribution in terms of uh, capital grant how much is the uh, availability payment outgo and what are the output indicators in terms of minimum debt service coverage maximum debt service coverage and project returns so that's how we calculate or analyze a particular project and recommend a particular mode of ppp basis the technical commercial legal regulatory sir aapka awaaz nahi aa raha hai and for a particular situation it may not be replic it may not be fully true for the other stretch of road other country or other state so every time we analyze a particular project type of project we have to look at all these uh, factors and then come out with a financial analysis one of the important aspects uh, while doing the ppp uh, 
analysis and uh, deciding on the board is the risk sharing risk sharing between public and private these are the typical risk sharing papers i am sure to be. we would have uh, uh, discussed this in the previous sessions so i will not uh, repeat that but this actually is important because whatever is not given as private sector responsibility will not come in the financial implications and will not be covered directly as cost or income in the uh, financial model so the purpose is that we need to first broadly or mainly decide on the risk shares risks and rewards and accordingly we calculate costs and revenue and come up with a model of ppp this is the typical structure uh, in ppp board wherein uh, authority awards the concession and uh, spp is created which has so many linkages so i'm sure uh, this was also covered uh, in previous sessions so i'll conclude this with uh, uh, the overall uh, discussion on ppp uh, mode and financial analysis for various ppp options any questions on this sir mera ek question tha ki jo not count karte hain calculation karte hain और आपने कंसेशन एग्रीमेंट में क्या प्रोविजन दिए कंसेशन एग्रीमेंट में लिखा हुआ मंथली रेस्ट तो मंथली रेस्ट करना पड़ेगा आपको कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट हो गया जी सी ये ये जो आ, said, ये जो भी आपके कैलकुलेशंस हैं दिस इज नथिंग बट जोड़ घटाना होता है जो आपके कमर्शियल कंसिडरेशन हैं या लीगल कंसिडरेशन हैं जैसे आपने सपोज किया कि आपने कंसेशन एग्रीमेंट में लिखा कि आपको टोल कलेक्ट करना है तो आपको टोल रेवेन्यू लेना है उसमें आपको होर्डिंग्स लगाना है अलाउड है तो होर्डिंग्स का जो रेवेन्यू है पोटेंशियल वो आपको ऐड कर देना है इसी तरह से सो हाइब्रिड एनविटी मॉडल में या किसी भी मॉडल में आपको इंटरेस्ट uh, कितना कैलकुलेट करना है या एनविटी को आपको कैसे इंक्रीज करना है जो आपने कंसेशन एग्रीमेंट में लिखना है वही आपको यहाँ पर बिल्ड uh, करना पड़ेगा सो so, इसका कोई सेट पैटर्न नहीं है ये एक रेगुलेटरी कंसिडरेशन है मतलब आपके कंसेशन एग्रीमेंट में आप क्या लिखना चाहते हैं या क्या आपके लिए बाइंडिंग है दैट हैज टू बी कन्वर्टेड इन दिस फाइनेंशियल मॉडल अगर जैसे कर्नाटका में एज आई मैं दे सेट कि हम लोग टीपीसी से नहीं करेंगे हम लोग कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर जो आपका एस्टिमेटेड कैपिटल कॉस्ट है सपोज पांच हजार करोड़ था इस पर्टिकुलर एग्जाम्पल में उसका फोर्टी परसेंट देंगे हम आपको फर्स्ट थ्री ईयर्स में ताकि वो टीपीसी ऊपर नीचे ना हो वो सेवन थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड करोड़ से घट के सिक्स थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड ना रह जाए उसमें इंटरेस्ट कब लेना हो उन्होंने सिंप्लीफाई कर दिया कि हम आप, अपना बता रहे हैं आपको फाइव थाउजेंड करोड़ मेरा केपेक्स है और 5000 करोड़ का मैं फोर्टी uh, परसेंट आपको ड्यूरिंग कंस्ट्रक्शन पीरियड दूंगा एंड रेस्ट यू बिल्ड इन योर एनुटी तो वो प्राइवेट प्लेयर क्या करेगा अपने मॉडल में 5000 का 40 परसेंट निकालेगा और बैलेंस वो अपना 15 परसेंट इक्विटी आर के लिए आइट्रेट करेगा उस मॉडल सो दैट्स हाउ वी बिल्ड द फाइनेंशियल मॉडल आई होप आई क्लैरिफाइड दिस हेलो हेलो एनी अदर क्वेश्चन am i audible uh, sorry uh, there is no response i hope ji uh, yes, sir all right do that acha okay so no question means either uh, it was all useful or otherwise sir you put now uh, bot plus uh, bot annuity plus toll is better no sir if that is the case uh, sir it's it's not a straight forward answer 
see from, from your uh, this uh, presentation it is felt that beauty and it ham plus toll ham plus toll is generally not uh, accepted uh, accepted by uh, government authorities the reason is they typically say uh, aap 5000 ka crore ka project kar rahe ho toll bhi wahi karega aap 40% abhi invest bhi kar doge to fayda kya hai but uh, responsibility of collection this with the with them no sir so not with the government yes so if if you actually pass on that responsibility to private sector and you know that traffic uh, uh, reasonably is uh, there matlab uh, the, cal- the traffic estimates are reasonable then uh, as against ham model ham plus toll is better because ham plus toll will reduce your liability yes sir because वो जो टोल से कलेक्शन है एंड प्लस थोड़ा लीकेजेस कम होगा बट वो पॉलिटिकली एक्सेप्ट नहीं हो रहा है सो व्हाट वी हैव सीन इज कि गवर्नमेंट विल से यार पांच हजार करोड़ सात हजार करोड़ का प्रोजेक्ट है जैसे ये उसका फोर्टी परसेंट थ्री थ्री थाउजेंड करोड़ आपने पहले ही दे दिया फिर आप उसको टोल भी दे रहे हो फिर भी आप एनिटी दे रहे हो तो ये तो एक्सपेंसिव हो रहा है तो ये ऐसे प्रोजेक्ट है जहां पर कॉस्ट ज्यादा है और रेवेन्यू कम है दूसरा ये है की पब्लिक सेक्टर में जो ट्रैफिक एस्टिमेट है पोटेंशियल रेवेन्यू जो टोल से आएगा वो आपने एस्टिमेट करा प्राइवेट साइड उसका रिस्क फैक्टर ट्वेंटी परसेंट लेके चल रहा है तो वो जो आपका एस्टिमेट है उससे प्रॉफिट वो बन ही नहीं रहा है तो बेड्स आपकी फेल हो रही हैं एंड दैट्स हाउ एंड ऑफ द डे यू हैव टू गेट दिस थिंग्स कंस्ट्रक्टेड प्राइवेट सेक्टर के पास पैसा नहीं है बैंकर्स पैसे नहीं लैंडिंग नहीं कर रहे हैं सो गवर्नमेंट इज गोइंग बैक टू द ईपीसी मोड वॉट दे आर थिंकिंग इज की तीन साल में बनवा लो उसके बाद उसको टोल टोल ऑपरेट ट्रांसफर मॉडल में बेच दो बंडल करके फिर उससे जो मनी आएगा फिर उससे तो अल्टीमेटली इट्स मनी स्पिनिंग कि आपको बीस करोड़ का पैसा आज तीन साल में दे सकते हो तो आज आप ईपीसी कर लीजिए नहीं पैसा है तो आपको डेफर करना है तो जितना डेफर करना है इनफैक्ट एक कंट्री में तो ऐसा है वो ये कह रहे थे कि कंस्ट्रक्शन पीरियड एक साल और बढ़ा दो ताकि चार साल तक पैसा ना देना पड़े तीन साल के बाद सो सो इट डिपेंड्स बिकॉज फाइनेंस डिपार्टमेंट जनरली सी दिस की मेरे मेरी जेब से कब पैसा जाना है and there are political considerations also wo bolte hai acha do saal baad election hai aap abhi to vote kar do mere paas se to paisa abhi jayega nahi kam kam jayega main to ye matlab udghatan kar deta hu uske baad dekhenge so these things are also happening so any other question uh, participants if not i can uh, complete this session and uh, i can give sir, back 10 minutes present, to part present presentation share kariye sir ha sure sir will will say so vipin sir are you there ji sir thank you sir okay so uh, i think uh, there is no further question and uh, for any question i am also available on uh, whatsapp or uh, mobile you can send me your uh, questions offline also i'll uh, be happy to respond ji yes, sir thank you sir okay thank you very thank much you very much sir thank, thank you very much. everyone for the participation and uh, i hope it was useful for all and for any further clarification or query please feel free to let me know i'll be happy to respond okay thank you very much i'm uh, logging off now thank okay. you thank you sir session over karte hain sir